It's a pleasure to participate in today's session. My name is Gary Beckstrand, and I will be facilitating today's discussion. I'm the vice president of the OC Tanner Institute, which is the research and education arm of the OC Tanner Company. Everything we do at OC Tanner is to help employees around the world feel appreciated and thrive at work. Our institute's research and education on corporate culture, employee experience, and recognition empowers organizations around the world to intentionally create healthy, productive workplace cultures. I'm very excited today to be joined by four expert panelists, Maria Fraga, the Head of Global Benefits and Wellness at Manulife, Susan McGann, the Senior Director of Enterprise Learning at ADP Canada, Asad Malik, the Vice President and Head of Total Rewards at Cineplex, and Shireen Batarse, the Director of People Services Technology, Strategy and Operations at Colliers International. Again, thank you all for being with us. Let's begin by having each of you introduce yourselves. We'll start with you, Maria. Thank you so much for having me here today. It's a pleasure. Um, yeah, as you said, I am Maria Fraga. I uh, am the Head of Global Benefits and Wellness at Manulife. I have been uh, with Manulife for over 30 years. Um, I was with John Hancock previously, uh, the U.S. arm of Manulife. Uh, I am responsible for setting the strategy and overseeing development, implementation, and management of our company-wide benefits uh, for total well-being for all of our Manulife employees worldwide. So again, thank you for having me on the panel today. Looking forward to the discussion. Thank you, Maria. It's great to have you with us today. Uh, Susan, will you introduce yourself, please? Sure. Thanks for having me. Grateful to be here. Uh, again, my name is Susan McGann, and I have the privilege of leading the enterprise learning and the knowledge management team for ADP Canada. Uh, we support our associates both from a getting started or new hire perspective all the way through their career in advancing proficiency. Uh, and we are um, one of the largest human capital management organizations uh, in Canada. And we um, have the privilege of making sure that people not only get paid, but have the benefits uh, that they need to do their jobs every day. Uh, I've been with ADP now for just uh, over three years, uh, but have been in the space of learning development and knowledge for almost 20 years. Glad to be here and uh, to be joined with such amazing panelists with me. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Susan. Asad, how about you, please? Thanks so much for having me, Gary, and a very thank you um, to uh, OC Tanner and the Institute for, for having me here. Uh, my name is Asad Malik. I head up Total Rewards for Cineplex Entertainment. We're one of the leading uh, entertainment organizations in Canada. Uh, been making a lot of very cool, uh, memorable experiences for Canadians for over 100 years in our movie theaters, our rec rooms, and Palladium. Um, facilities, as well as some of our diversified businesses. Uh, we're within Canada and the U.S. Um, my scope includes total reward, rewards, which includes compensation, benefits, wellness, recognition. Um, prior to joining Cineplex, I've held a variety of different uh, progressive total rewards roles within uh, the financial services sector, uh, pharmaceutical retail, and high-tech telco, and I'm just really thrilled to be here today. Thanks so much, Gary. Great. Thank you very much, Asad. And last but not least, Shireen, please. Thank you, Gary, for um, hosting me here and for the panel. I'm a director of people services at uh, Colliers. It's uh, one of the top three commercial real estate companies. Um, I manage technology strategy and operations for people services at Colliers, and I have over 16 years of experience in digitizing HR processes across multiple industries. Right now in commercial real estate, but previously in finance, oil and gas, um, healthcare. I have also worked with United Nations in the same capacity. Um, so I look forward to our discussion today. Wonderful. Thanks so much. Again, Shreed, thank you for being with us. And it's going to be a great session, and I just so appreciate your willingness to join us today and share your expertise. I look forward to hearing your ideas and insights. Um, I wanted to just take a, a moment to set the context for our discussion, then we'll open it up to the panel for discussion. But 2021, I think you'll agree with me, continues to be a challenging year. Organizations across Canada are reevaluating how to deal with longer than anticipated pandemic challenges including varying provincial shutdowns and lagging vaccination schedules. 
In addition, Canadians are seeing racial and gender discrimination, both past and present. We've asked our employees to adjust how and where they work, to adapt to reduce budgets and fewer resources, asking them to do essentially more with less in this time of uncertainty and change. And although employees have stepped up to maintain and actually in some cases increase productivity, we're seeing that employee burnout is on the rise. In fact, in recent surveys conducted by the OC Tanner Institute, 52% of Canadians reported that the pandemic has made them feel physically or emotionally exhausted. And at any given time on average, up to 50% of employees are suffering moderate to severe levels of burnout. Employees are increasingly feeling disconnected, disconnected from purpose, accomplishment, and one another. So today we want to talk about things we can do to maintain those critical connections with employees, to improve their overall well-being and increase great work. What we've learned so far and what are some new ideas that we should be considering. So let's hear from our panelists. I'd like to begin with the topic of communication. Um, I, I think we would all agree, right, that most organizations have stepped up efforts to communicate with employees, uh, that we've seen kind of this notion of, of radical transparency, of the need to communicate and be really open in that communication. So I'd like to hear from each of you about this topic. And, and the, quest, the first question is a bit of a two-part question, but how is frequent and transparent communication keeping everyone focused on what matters most and at the same time, how are you walking the line between keeping employees in the loop with all the changes and updates while not overloading them with too much information or bombarding them with constant emails? Susan, let's start with you. Sure. So I think that, you know, when you consider the fact that we, I want to call ourselves in the midst of a public health crisis because it's, it's, not as crazy as it was for most of us as in organizations in the beginning, uh, but it's not over. Like, the runway is, is still lengthy in front of us. I think that from the onset, we found that the cadence of communication was critical, and it needed to kind of ebb and flow with what was happening in our world. You know, our organization in the beginning kind of came together on a daily or every other day basis to have open conversations and communications with leaders. And that was cascaded down. So all directors met every other day. And then that was cascaded, cascaded to the managers and to our frontline associates. Um, but what was critical about those communication pieces and what I gleaned as important in those uh, communications was the fact that our leadership was not saying they knew all the answers. They were being super transparent about the fact that there's things that we didn't know um, but was also really apparent was that the most important part of that conversation was putting our people first. And I think that that, you know, that no matter how frequent you're communicating, it's important that every time you do, you're making sure that it's clear that your people are your most valued resource and they are first. And when you put your people first, you find that they put your clients first. And that was a big part of what we found. You know, that went from every other day to a weekly communication and then subsequently biweekly. And now we still have those communications monthly as things, the, the rapidity of change has slowed. And so, you know, you have the ability to kind of connect now on a monthly basis. But I feel like in the beginning, it was important for our leadership to have that frequent touch points with our teams, offering transparency and being honest about what we knew and what we didn't know with a focus on putting people first. The other side of your question, though, I think was also really critical, and it was around how much is too much? Because, you know, every day there was emails coming in, and when you take what we have as employees, you know, you have to also multiply that with what you have as people. And parents are getting emails from their schools, from their children's schools, and uh, post-school uh, events, and all the other things that were changing in this crazy time. What we found at ADP was making communication not only a push but a pull and creating a destination for our employees to go to to get the most up-to-date information and having kind of a stream on our intranet site that allowed people to see what they wanted and click on the bar to go to where they wanted to find information rather than just bombarding people with uh, emails was a critical change that we made early days that brought us a lot of success. It also helped reduce people feeling overwhelmed with the pace of change, um, but so confident that they knew where to go when they needed to find information that was important to them. 
Oh, that's so great. I, I really appreciate those comments. And, and in particular, what stood out to me is this notion of it's not just about communicating more. It's about how we communicate and, and how we make sure that the, the primary message is we're concerned about you, that we're putting you, our employees, our people first. And I think that's so important and, and something that I think will benefit us moving forward. Um, marvelous. I, one of the things we did at OC Tanner is we started out with a daily email from our executive team headed up by our, our head of people and great work. And that was great over a period of time. But now we've moved, we, we've actually incorporated a, a company blog, a daily blog, which is more of a destination location as opposed to pushing that out. And again, kind of a nice way, as you mentioned, Susan, you kind of figure out new ways to approach things and how to maintain that communication without overloading. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, thank you very much. Asad, what's been your experience? Thanks so much for the question, Gary. And, and, and one of the uh, points that Susan mentioned around putting people first is, is such a valid um, point to make. Um, I think, you know, when I take a look at Cineplex, one of the things around communication for us was, um, and I take a look at the pandemic and how it's affected businesses. Um, and I sometimes remind individuals that Every organization had to deal with a pandemic. Very few of them had to deal with a pandemic and a pending acquisition, which was the case that we were in for the first six months of the year last year. So there was a lot of communication happening externally um, in, uh, about the organization throughout that period of time, and a lot we were trying to manage internally as well. And I think on the topic of transparency, I think this is one of the first times in, in history where... I think people are just being, and organizations are being a lot more vulnerable. They're showing both the good and the bad. Sometimes it's not as easy to communicate some of the most more difficult questions, whether it's around salary reductions or layoffs or, you know, inclusivity and diversity. But I think what we're trying to do and something at Cineplex we focused on is specifically around being transparent, telling people the way they want to be heard, um, treating people like adults, um, and giving them all the all the information we possibly can. And what we've tried to do is um, increase some of that communication, be you know, specifically around town halls. We've had more town halls. Um, and and what we've tried to also do is um, you know, uh, have an opportunity where we have more 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 time allotted to those town halls for questions rather than us pushing information down. Um, so that's been that's been uh, quite helpful as well. But again, telling people essentially communicating some of the good news, but also some of the bad news. Um, and I know that they've really uh, appreciated that. The other thing I'd say has been a focus is the focus on leadership and 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 acknowledging that leadership is a privileged role, and 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 how key of a role it is, and especially managing a um, a virtual team. And so making sure that we equip managers with the right tools and, and, and the support that they have, but then also encouraging um, them to check in with their teams a little bit more often in both formal and informal um, settings as well. So that was a big deal for us. And I'd say the, the last element was making sure that um, with as busy as our communications, our internal communications team has been, making sure that we... Um, that we're joined at the hip and we're planning things a little bit better. Um, so we've, we've been meeting weekly and bi-weekly at times to plan out what we're saying, how we're saying it, what's the channel that we're going to use, um, you know, and, and leveraging a variety of different channels, whether it's email, whether it's uh, Microsoft Teams, whether it's uh, a, a note at home, whatever that is. And, and I think the, 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 you know, the contrast I'd say and, and, and is, is around that there's no kind of perfect solution for every organization or silver bullet. I think every organization has a different culture. I think Gary, you mentioned around um, you know, daily, daily emails that were being sent by the senior leadership team at OC Tanner. So I think you just need to understand what your organization um, is like and the, 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 you know, the DNA of the organization and, and manage it that way. Great. Thank you so much. I, I think our, our research, as we've uh, talked with employees and heard from them uh, throughout the last year and a half or so, um, it's interesting as human nature, without information, we tend to go to the worst possible place, right? It, especially in times of uncertainty. And I, I love the comment, uh, Asad, around this notion of uh, being vulnerable, 
right? And and in a sense, organizationally, and, and even as leaders, as we've heard more from senior leaders than we have in the past, I think at our organization, to get to know them personally and to hear how they're responding and dealing with the uncertainties and, and, and sharing tough information. And I think there's a silver lining there. And I think that we can all take note that um, that's, that's a good thing to continue and, and to find ways to, to move that forward. The second thing that stuck out as you were, you were speaking, I saw this notion of the importance of being intentional, right? That, that we're thinking more about how we communicate, when we communicate and what we say. And I, I think that is maybe a silver lining of pandemic and other challenges is it's forcing us to reconsider things that we've done in past to be more intentional, to make improvements and maybe in interesting ways, provide us some opportunities to move forward and to make advancements in areas that we've wanted to for some time, especially from a human resources perspective. So thank you very much for that. Uh, Shireen, let's, let's move to you and, and uh, share with us what your experience has been. Thank you. Um, being in a commercial real estate, you can imagine how the pandemic increased the fear for our workforce. Um, so in communication and being vulnerable, having that communication on a right on, on a cadence was very important for us. But at the same time, what we ended up doing is we have a communication going out from our executives, but we also for people services, we streamlined all our communications that they all go out through one email. Um, they can click within the email to what to read, uh, but it's one email that go out, goes out monthly um, and then our professionals are expecting that email to get out those um, notifications. And we kept other tools like um, the intranet for us up to date and have that communication really streamlined because we did hear around um, just being bombarded with so much information, whether that's from work or school or outside. So we really needed to help our professionals there when it comes to communication. Um, and transparency was huge for us. Um, really, even our executives, we didn't know what's going to what it's going to look like, um, and we had to make um, difficult decisions. But ultimately, really, we our financial results became really good, and everybody was happy after some time. But during the initial expectation, we all were in fear. So we had those town halls and those um, vulnerable and difficult conversations to say, you know, we need to cut here, but we need to increase here and let's rescale our, wor our workforce given where we can focus more. It's wonderful. Thank you. Appreciate your sharing those examples. Um, consistency, right? And managing expectations so people know what to expect, when to receive what, I think is going to be very important. Maria, um, what are your thoughts on the topic? Um, Gary, thank you so much for that very important question. Um, first, I want to acknowledge that this is an unprecedented time that we're in, not only because of the pandemic, but also because of the social issues that we've been facing across North America, and also the recent Indigenous findings in Canada. Um, this is unsettling for all of us, and although some of the circumstances have changed since the start of the pandemic, the uncertainty can lead to heightened levels of anxiety. Um, and have uh, led to heightened levels of anxiety. I would say that our leaders have really been focused on encouraging our people to put their mental health and well-being first. We've been offering increased uh, support through innovative global tactics to equip our teams with virtual sessions and tools and techniques to keep our mental health and well-being at the forefront. Uh, the importance of our values and culture have really come to the forefront over the past year and a half and have been on display every day. Our values have really guided us in how have we have come together to support not only our customers, but our employees and our communities and each other through this unprecedented time. Uh, we've really doubled down on the support of our employees by offering virtual uh, mental health options uh, bringing in uh, motivational speakers during online meetings. Uh, these guest speakers have really uh, been focusing and sharing their tools and strategies on how to stay balanced, happy, and really focused on their mental well-being 
uh, during these times. Um, you know, our CEO, Roy Gorey, sends out frequent messages, as do many of our global and regional segment leaders. Manulife has also uh, hosted live Ask Me Anything sessions with our executive team. Um, we gave everyone a thank you day off in June of last year, and we are doing so again this year. And it's actually this Friday, which I'm very excited about. Um, we've dedicated microsites with resources to help people find the support they need. Uh, as I mentioned before, we offer a speaker series where we've hosted, uh, they're hosted by our business leaders, uh, but we've brought in the external experts and these included health experts on health and wellness, mental health, diversity, um, epidemiologists really to talk about even the COVID vaccine and to really help employees get the facts, really distinguish between what's fact and what's myth. And it's also helped, uh, you know, these sessions have also helped our uh, employees connect on a worldwide basis, help us connect uh, globally to each other. Um, one of the things we also did, and I know I've talked quite a bit now about uh, different uh, events that we've had, and your question was really around communications, but they're all forms of communications. We really took a step back and, and thought about, you know, communications isn't just about emails or a microsite or, uh, you know, uh, uh, virtual meetings. It's about thinking about what do our employees need today and how can we support them uh, today? And as we sat and thought about that, you know, you think about uh, families, they are now home, remote, uh, they're remote working, they're home, they're challenged with having children at home and homeschooling. And, you know, so some of the things we did there is um, we hosted virtual talent shows, right? A little bit of a break from reality. And you get to see your, your colleagues in a whole different light. So talk about, you know, one of our values, which is sharing your humanity. Talk about really sharing your, your humanity with your, your coworkers, your colleagues. We did uh, book clubs. We hosted camp for Manulife uh, children of our employees, uh, where they actually got uh, kits uh, mailed to their homes and every week uh, they had they got together for camp hosted by one of our leaders we actually had our CEO Roy uh, read um, a book t during one of the the sessions to to the children of our of our employees so this was really about helping to keep our employees engaged give them a, a little bit of of a break um, and and keep them informed, keep them engaged. And, you know, at the end of all this, you've got to think about, you know, are we communicating too much? Tying back to your question. And how do we know? How do we know? Did we do the right thing? Are we doing the right thing? So, you know, timing is perfect. We actually uh, have received our 2020 Gallup employee engagement scores. And I'm happy to report that they've actually increased and they now had us in the top quartile of financial services companies as it relates to engagement. And their feedback served uh, to have us named as one of the top 100 employee by Forbes and one of the only three financial services companies included in that. So this is, uh, this is we know it's working. Right, but it takes different modalities to really reach our employees and and um, and their families where they are. Wonderful, thank you all for sharing your thoughts on that particular topic. I I couldn't agree more. Um, business results and what we've talked about in terms of leadership requirements and and a shift in that are not mutually exclusive. They they we're finding interestingly enough again as Assad. Uh, you know, referred to this as the event <laughs> has allowed us to see some things and, and quite act actually respond in ways that our research has indicated over uh, a number of years to the things that really matter most to employees in their decision to join, engage with, and stay at your organizations. It's that desire to connect, right? And to, 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 to feel and to connect in ways that we've talked about today. And they want to deliver great results. People naturally want to do great work. And if we continue to intentionally 
create workplace environments where people feel confident and connected and can thrive and can really bring their whole selves to work and engage fully, those business results take care of themselves. And, and uh, I just couldn't agree more. Thank you again so much to all of you for taking time and, and sharing your insights with us. Um, I'd like to mention to all of those who are watching or participating in this session that if you'd like to learn more or read more about workplace culture, um, I invite you to go to octanner.com and review our latest global culture report. Uh, each year we publish a uh, global report on workplace culture and we've been addressing and will continue to address many of the topics that we've talked about. One of the unique things about our research that we do is it is completely from the employee's perspective. And as we think about how we respond and how we move forward, uh, it's helpful to know, again, what are those things that are most important to employees so that we can be intentional about creating workplace cultures where our people can thrive. Thanks again so much. Uh, great information. I wish we could go on for another a uh, couple of days. Maybe we'll have to revisit this and invite you back again. Much appreciated. Thanks all.